Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. Uh, this is a video series that I'm putting together that has a special emphasis on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, you've got it installed, it works, but uh, you load it up and you really don't know how to do much with it. So that's what these videos are for, and I am assuming that you're going to watch these videos in order. So if you have stumbled on this video and you're just finding my channel for the first time, I would recommend that you go back to the first video in this beginner guide series and work your way forward through there. So in the uh, last several videos, we've established you know, how to get up into orbit. We've talked about raising and lowering our orbit. And we've got all the way to the International Space Station and we've learned how to dock. Hopefully uh, you've followed those steps and you've progressed accordingly and you're now in comfortable territory here at the ISS. Now there is still more to cover with regards to plane alignment and sinking orbits and all that, but before we explore that in more detail, I want to get into landing. When I was brand new to Orbiter, it took me, I don't even know how long, before I was able to successfully deorbit and land. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's a difficult thing to do. It's probably, uh, probably on a scale of 1 to 10, it's a 10. I mean, it's one of the more difficult things that you can learn to do. Uh, docking, get, getting to the ISS and docking is pretty easy. Going to the moon and landing on the moon is actually, compared to deorbiting and landing at Earth, it's actually pretty easy to go to the moon. So we'll talk about that a little bit later too. But I think that new people are probably fairly excited about making a round trip. You want to go up to the ISS and you want to be able to come back down. So we're going to tackle the complex, uh, the complex topic of deorbit and landing. It's not that difficult to deorbit. Um, I mean, essentially all you do is turn your vessel retrograde, burn the engines for a couple of seconds, and that will, that will have you basically deorbited. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's very really simple. The complexity of deorbit and land reentry and landing comes not from the process of doing it, but it comes from uh, actually targeting a, a specific base and landing in the vicinity of that base, preferably on the runway, preferably on the center line, and preferably in one piece without destroying the vessel. It's, it's hard. It's very difficult. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let me uh, switch camera views here. And let's uh, jump inside the vessel and start taking a look at what we should probably do. All right, well, here we are in orbit. We're docked to the ISS. You can see our position here. Now, we're not going to use any add-on MFDs. We're going to do this uh, strictly with the MFDs that come with Orbiter. That's actually going to make our life a little bit more difficult than it has to be. But I don't want to, uh, I don't want to overly complicate things by having people have to go and download additional software and load it into Orbiter. I think that makes things a bit more complicated. The basic idea of deorbit is that whatever you do on one side of your orbit affects the opposite side. So just like when we raise and lower our orbit, when we go prograde and we add in velocity, it has no change on our altitude where we're at. Rather, it has a change on the opposite side of our orbit. So if you think about it, in order to deorbit, if we want to target you know, Cape Canaveral, where we started at, we want to be simply 180 degrees around the planet. We want to be on the opposite side of the planet. And when we do our, basically what we're going to do is lower our orbit. If you recall from raising and lowering our orbit, that video, when we went to the retrograde position and we fired our engines to lower our orbit, that's exactly what we're going to do here for our deorbit maneuver. But instead of just, instead of bringing our altitude down, our periapsis, instead of bringing it down to just 200 kilometers or whatever, we're going to bring our periapsis all the way down to like 40 kilometers. Note that we're not going to bring it down below the surface. We're not going to bring it down to zero. We're going to bring it down to about 40 kilometers. And there's a reason for that. Won't really necessarily get into it, but basically we just need to get into the atmosphere. Now, we can't just go around halfway and then fire the engines to deorbit because we have a particular 
line, uh, this, this orbital line that we're going around the Earth, if we were, let's say we were to fire our engines in the retrograde position here, which is about halfway around, notice that as we come back around the planet, we're not going to be at KSC because the line's way up here. So if we do a deorbit burn here, when we go around, we're actually going to be uh, landing somewhere up here in uh, Canada, and we don't want to do that. So the first thing that we really have to do is we need to just warp time forward. We just need to let time pass until our future orbit, which would be our very next one, will pass near the base. And it actually works out a little better if you change the orbit display line instead of having orbit plane, which is the one that we usually prefer. But for this particular case, we want to go to ground track. And if you remember, I think in one of the videos, we, yeah, one of the videos we talked about the ground track, it shows us not just our orbital plane, but it shows us our future orbits. And I can see here, if I kind of zoom in a little bit on, if I kind of zoom in here a little bit, I can see that on my second orbit around, I'm going to be fairly close to KSC. So let's go ahead and zoom out, and let's just warp time forward. There's really nothing else that we can do at this point. We're going to go all the way around. We're following this line here. We can go out to 1,000 safely enough. And you can see as we come up, uh, past, you know, we're crossing the Pacific Ocean. As we come up here, we're going to go around this way. Let's go ahead and warp time forward a little faster. Now I can tell that on my next orbit around, I'm following the center line here now. You can kind of see as this center line comes around, it's going to pass pretty close to Cape Canaveral. It's not super close, but it's close enough for our purposes. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to plan our deorbit burn uh, when we're halfway around from Cape Canaveral. So what we need to do is to target Cape Canaveral on map MFD. And that gives us this number down here, the distance from the base. And the distance will continue to go up as we get farther from the base, because currently you know the base is there, so we're only 6,600 kilometers away from it it will continue to go up until we reach the halfway point. You know, once we're halfway around the planet, we're no longer getting farther away. We're now coming back around and we're getting closer to it. So I kind of tend to watch this number here, and it's going to top out somewhere around 19,000 kilometers. We, we just know that from, uh, from experience. So we can't, um, we can't land while we're attached to the ISS. It's not a good idea. So we're going to undock. There's a couple ways to do that. You can press Control D, which is kind of what I prefer. But in the uh, cockpit view here, if you press F8 to get this up and press the down arrow, uh, you can come down here and just see where it says Dock Release, and you can click this button. And we are now undocked. Now, if you are kind of in a rush to get away from the ISS, you can use a little bit of translation. But when you undock, it's kind of a spring-loaded process. It kind of pushes you away. So if you just press T, you know, warp time forward a little bit, that'll give you a little bit of separation. And once you're, once you have a little bit of separation, rotation. It's a good idea to go to translation mode. Translation. And you just kind of want to translate away from the ISS, and that would the away from the ISS would be, you know, up, down, and lateral or backwards. We kind of want to do some of those movements, maybe a combination of them. So I'm just going to push a little bit of eight. And that's just kind of pushing me down relative to the ISS. And maybe just a little bit of lateral. Just giving myself some separation. That way when it comes time to do the deorbit burn, I don't run the risk of running straight through the thing. Now we can also kind of start thinking ahead a little bit. We've got some stuff open that uh, doesn't need to be open, like the nose cone, for example. Keyboard shortcut for that is K. Again, refer to your orbiter.pdf in the doc folder for all the keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to go ahead and press K to close the nose cone. I think it's K. Yes, it's K. And I'll press T one time to warp time forward to get through that animation a little faster. It won't be long before we will uh, close the retro doors, but I'll go ahead and leave them open for now, just in case they could come in handy. And we'll press F1 to jump back inside the flight deck. And we, don't, we do not need the dock HUD up anymore, so we'll press H to get over to the more useful orbit HUD. 
Now we basically just need to plan on warping time forward until we get to that halfway point. And this is just a little thing that bugs me. When, when I'm targeting things that no, don't need to be targeted, I'm no longer interested in the ISS, so I'm going to go to target no orbit just to get rid of that. It's just needless clutter. And we don't need that up anymore either, so let's bring up something more useful like orbit MFD. And remember, projection ship distance to the plant uh, above the surface instead of planocentric. And now, again, just warping time forward at a factor of 10 so that we can get halfway around. And again, halfway around is going to be when the distance is close to 19,000 kilometers. It's when you get over here towards Australia. Getting reasonably close. Okay, we're about 18 and a half, so let's start thinking about what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to be in the retrograde position, because remember when we need to um, lower the other side of our orbit, we need to be facing against the direction of flight. So since we're coming up to that point, and we know that it's not too far away, let's get oriented now. We can press T to speed that up a little bit. And once the uh, ship is good and settled, let's go ahead and turn the retrograde autopilot off for just a moment so we don't waste any fuel. Now I'm pressing T one time, and I'm just going to watch this number right here until it stops counting up. And it's going to be just any moment. It'll be 19 point something, and then you'll notice it'll top out. See, it's slowing down, and now it's 50, and now it's going 49. So we know... Now we've gone halfway around the globe, we're ha or at least we're halfway around the planet from the target base, and now it's time to do our retrograde burn. And this doesn't require very much main engine at all. There's no need to press and hold the plus button, because that'll, that'll put in way too much uh, thrust. We just want to put in a, a couple of presses of main engine, and you can see the PEA coming down. And again, our target PEA is going to be uh, 40 kilometers and it doesn't have to be precise it doesn't have to, this is one time at least where it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect you know like with the relative inclination you want it to come all the way down to 0, 0.00 when we're talking about deorbiting there's a lot of flexibility but 40 kilometers is a good figure getting close to that point and whenever you get really close like this, go ahead and kill the main engines. Rotation, and we can just translate the last little bit. And just to show that it doesn't have to be perfect, I'll overshoot it just a little bit and say, okay, that's good enough. Now, we are still in space. We are still at 368 kilometers. So there's really no atmosphere up here to deal with. So we are allowed, we are comfortable with going ahead and warping time forward. But we do know that once we get over around to this point, we're going to start hitting the atmosphere and things are going to change. So we do not want to be in this position. So let's go ahead and just, uh, we don't even have to hit use um, prograde. We can just rotate around. Rotation. I'll just hit the rotation. And what I'm going to do, that's it. Just one click of yaw. Now if I press T to warp time forward, you can see that it's yawing me around. And it saves me a lot of fuel actually to do that. Not necessarily a ton, but quite a bit and there we go now we're back around basically to prograde so I'm going to hit kill rotate and we're going to continue to warp time forward and we won't worry too much about our position at this point we know we're basically facing forward unless things go completely way out which they kind of are at this point so let's go ahead and rotate back around And we'll kill rotate again, and we'll warp time forward. What we're looking for altitude-wise is 120 kilometers. And that's what's called entry interface. If you're interested in that, you can maybe do a Google search on entry interface and read a little bit about it. Entry interface is basically the point where you are so you're low enough in the atmosphere that you're going to be getting effect from the atmosphere, and you need to start thinking about what you have to do to be getting into the atmosphere. And we'll talk about that here right now, because we are now at 120 kilometers. When you reach this point, uh, your, the pressure, the amount of 
atmosphere that's affecting your vessel is very low still. It's a, in fact, it's almost zero. It is zero. But you don't want to be at that you're you're coming down. You know, we're coming down at 168 meters a second at this at this point. So that means anything that's open that could be affected by the atmosphere needs to be closed up. If, if we have the radiator open, that should be closed. If we have the nose cone open, that should be closed. Anything that's open should be closed. And right now we still have the retro doors open and we're gonna have to close those up. So let's go inside and we'll press the down arrow to uh, get to this lower part of the panel and we're just gonna close up those retro doors. Now comes the part where you just have to fly your way down and I recommend using a joystick for this uh, it does not have to be a good joystick and I've said in a few other videos I'll say it again a good joystick and orbiter is a waste of money uh, all you need is just some kind of analog control but I do recommend an actual joystick and not a game pad game pads are not really any better than the keyboard when it comes to uh, orbiter now as we're coming down uh, as we're coming down through the atmosphere here, we just have to keep an eye on our alignment with uh, Cape Canaveral. You can see currently we're coming up quite a bit to the south. So that means as we, we're not going to be lined up with the base very well if we just fly continually on the heading that we're currently on. We're gonna to need to put in a bit of correction to the north. You know, we need to pull our vessel uh, basically up so but we can't really do that yet we're still a little high you know 100 kilometers we're not getting enough um, enough air pressure coming up over the wings yet so now that we've got everything closed up we're past entry interface and we've got everything closed up I'm just going to go ahead and continue warp time forward here a little bit more until I get down to about 85 86 kilometers something like that and we'll go with that we're at about 85 kilometers so now I'm going to turn off rotation, Attitude off. and I've already got surface controls on, but if they weren't, then I would need to turn surface controls on by right-clicking over here. And now I'm going to just kind of test my control at this point. I'm just kind of pulling my joystick to the right, pulling it to the left, just to see how much control I have. At this point, the flight, and at this point in the altitude, things are still very loose for me, but I, still, but I do have some control, and that's good. What I'm going to do is, since I need to pull myself essentially to the north, I'm going to put in maximum elevator trim. You can see the elevator trim over there going into the up position that's pitching the vessel up this way. And what that will do for me is that will pull, as I'm flying down through the atmosphere, that's going to start pulling my vessel toward the north a little bit. And you'll notice here, very gradually at first, that this green line that's currently going to the south of Cape Canaveral, it will eventually start working its way, it will eventually start working its way further, you know, farther to the north. And I can help that out a little bit more by putting in a lot of uh, pitch this way, and then turning off, I'll show you how this works, and put in more than that, basically maximum pitch, and I'm going to turn off the surface controls. And what that does is it locks the elevator into the full upright position, and that's what we need. Now I'm going to turn rotation back on so I can control the vessel. Now as we're coming down through the atmosphere, we don't want to have too much, uh, too much dynamic pressure. Let's bring up surface MFD. And we kind of watch this number over here. This is our dynamic pressure. This is essentially, uh, for lack of a more in-depth explanation, it's how hot we're going to get eventually. Um, you know, the more pressure that we have on the vessel, you know, the, the, the hotter things are going to get. So we kind of want to descend down through the atmosphere at a, at a fairly gradual pace. We don't want to come down too quickly because will overheat and we don't want to come in too shallow because then we'll blow past the base and end up in South America instead of instead of on target. So the, the kind of the number that you want to look for for coming down through the atmosphere is roughly around a hundred meters a second. Right now we're coming in 
you know, we're only at 69, so I'm going to rotate a bit more to the left, and that'll actually end up speeding up my uh, descent down through the atmosphere. And you can see over here that the orbit line is currently uh, coming up shy. So what I need to do is actually kind of rotate out a little bit. And I'm also going to actually uh, just go ahead and do a roll over at this point because you can see now the orbit line is north of Cape Canaveral. So by kind of turning things over, and unfortunately I'm gaining a whole lot of... Um, vertical speed by doing that, but that'll happen. But by turning around the other way, I'm going to start pulling the green line back down toward Cape Canaveral, and we just have to go back and forth, essentially. And I need to pitch in toward the Earth a bit, or rather roll in toward the Earth a little bit to bring the vertical speed down. And this process is kind of a roller coaster ride, and it's a little tedious, but and it's difficult to to get it right, but uh, just takes practice. And this is something that, similar to docking, you can watch somebody else do it dozens and dozens of times, and that will only help to some. That will only help to a certain extent. You just have to do it yourself. Now, unfortunately, I can't time warp through this because uh, when you're doing anything involving the atmosphere, any amount of time warp just really kind of messes things up. So we're seeing now that we're pretty well targeted on Cape Canaveral. So I'm going to go ahead and let myself roll back out a little bit so that I don't, uh, so I don't come up short. And we can also see that our distance from the base is 2,900 kilometers. We also want to keep an eye on that number to give us a good indication of when we need to do a bit more of an aggressive descent into the atmosphere. And you don't want to worry too much about, like, okay, the line is now just a tad bit south, so do I need to roll over again? You, your position can change so quickly that you don't need to just constantly roll back and forth. But we will roll back over the other direction uh, before too long. And it always helps, too, if you zoom in a little bit as you, as you can to get finer, you know, finer granularity. I'm just kind of rolling back out a little bit. And remember, you know, surface controls uh, are off, and we have that elevator kind of locked in that position, and that just helps us uh, get the steering that we need. But for this part of the flight, it's all being done uh, currently with just rotation, basically. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll back over now. I'm gonna do it quickly. That way I don't gain a lot of vertical speed. And by rolling back over this way, I will pull the green line back over toward Cape Canaveral. And I'm going to let myself descend down into the atmosphere a bit more. Now this measurement here, by the way, is not extremely precise. There's a better MFD for this purpose, but again, since I don't want to get into um, the installation of additional add-ons and things like that, um, I don't want to. I'm not going to get into that here. But just just know that this is not perfect. But it does give us at least a bit of a measurement. So here I'm just kind of rolling back out, you know, out into space a little bit. And by doing that, it's going to reduce my vertical speed a little bit. Just keeping an eye also on how close or how far I am from the base. I want to get uh, quite close before I really lose, you know, too much velocity. But we do want to do our best to continually come down through the atmosphere. Um, it's really ideal if you don't, if you can avoid the roller coaster as much as possible. And when I say roller coaster, what I'm referring to, if you look at your flight profile, 
when you start at entry interface 120 kilometers, you really want to be going downhill the whole time. That's easier said than done. It's very common that you'll actually skip here and there, and that's what we call the roller coaster. Now I can see that uh, you know I'm pulling in better toward KSC. The line's extending out a bit past it, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a little a little bit more left roll. That'll increase my vertical speed, which means I'll get down through the atmosphere a little faster. And as that green line passes over top of KSC and gets farther and farther that way, of course I'll have to go ahead and roll back over the other way. Go ahead and zoom in one more level since we're getting close enough that we can see ourselves and KSC. Maybe go in one more level yet. And we'll back out for now, we're not quite close enough. And 100, 100 meters a second is a pretty good number. So if you start getting down to you know, 98, 99, maybe, maybe roll out a bit. Not too much, because we do want to keep going down. But we don't really want to... Uh, if we come down too quickly, then our dynamic pressure increases a lot, and we end up with a very hot vessel. And in this particular vessel, I always make the joke that it's made of unobtainium, which means it's indestructible. It won't. It can't be destroyed by virtually anything. Um, but even so, we would still prefer to do things a bit more realistic. Go ahead and roll back. I'm going to go roll back the other way, but I'm going to roll upside down this way so that my vertical speed doesn't increase. Instead, it will actually decrease, and I'm okay with that for now. That's a bit much more than I wanted to go, but uh, we'll be okay. You can really hear things, the outside air, you can hear that. And we've got a little bit of uh, heat build up there on the outside. Careful not to let the vertical speed climb. We don't want to climb, we, can, we want to keep going down. We're now just 700 kilometers out from the base, so we're getting pretty close. Go ahead and rotate in toward the uh, earth a little bit more to increase our vertical speed. And we're only 600 kilometers out from the base. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, that pitch because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to eliminate the elevator trim that we had. Because right now it's not doing us any favors to have all that additional to have that additional uh, pitch in our flight. And we're going to have to roll over the other way for a moment. So we'll do this fairly quickly. And we're going to be passing the base here on the left. That's going to be Cape Canaveral over there, so we're going to go past it. That's going to be okay. What we'll do is we'll just circle around and come back. But if we come down through the atmosphere with any more uh, intensity than this, then our dynamic pressure is just going to get really, really out of control. In fact, it's really a little higher than we want it to be even now. Go ahead and press H now, go to the surface view instead. And as we pass the base here, what we're going to do is basically a hard uh, turn. We're just going to basically circle around as much as we can. And that's kind of indica indicative of the inaccuracy of this uh, green ending point. You know, it's just not as accurate as we would like it to be. Go ahead and turn rotation off. And we don't want to go super far past the base, so let's go ahead and... Uh, I don't have... There we go. So now we're just going to turn basically completely on our side. And we don't want to climb excessively. 
and I'm just going to do a turn, not too hard, because we don't want to have a G load that would kill our, you know, our, the people that are on board the vessel here. You can see our heading slowly coming around. It's going to take a while because we're still at a very high velocity. But we're just going to have to turn back and get over to the base. And we've still got the velocity to do it. We want to bleed off uh, quite a bit more of that though. We're at 5,000 meters a second. That's still very excessive for where we're at. And we'll come down a little bit, but we don't want to descend, you know, more than 100 meters a second. That's a good, that's a good figure. And we're past the base now by 500 kilometers, but we're going to turn around and, you know, we are turning around. We're doing a, a huge U-turn across the ocean. And there we are at 100 meters a second, so let's kind of uh, bank back out a little bit so that we don't descend any more than that. And we will get closer to the base here as we uh, complete our loop-de-loop -loop here in the sky. You can see our heading slowly coming around. We're almost uh, due east right now, so we still got to turn another 180 degrees. And the vertical speed is almost at zero, so we can go and kind of bank back to the left a little bit. And we've still got plenty of velocity, so we have no worries about getting over to the base. Uh, just keep an eye on, you know, your vertical speed. You don't want to dip down too far into the atmosphere and lose all your velocity, because if you do, you won't have enough energy to get over to the base. But uh, it is helpful to continually work our way down at this point, because we do need to still bleed off a lot of that velocity. We're about a thousand kilometers out, so a matter of fact, I'm just going to kind of raise up the nose a little bit, bring the bring the vertical speed closer to zero until I'm headed back toward the base. And of course, there are much better ways to do this uh, landing and this reentry, but we need we we don't absolutely need more sophisticated MFDs, but it certainly helps a lot if we have uh, tools like Aerobrake MFD and base sync helps a little bit too. I could have done better than this just using these generic MFDs, but it's been a while since I've tried this kind of a flight. <laughs> you can see we are at uh, 3,600 meters a second in terms of our velocity, so it's coming down. And it's coming down quickly, so let's not lose any more velocity until we are on our way back to the base. So what I'm going to do is just gently bank out so that I'm not necessarily climbing, but I don't want to. I don't want to go down any farther, because the lower we are in the atmosphere, the more drag, the you know, the more friction we have. And that's going to slow us down even faster. And since we're this far out from the base, I don't want to slow down. I want to just keep the velocity that I've got. And in, in, in order to keep that velocity, I want to stay up here at this uh, 40 kilometers, because the atmosphere is still pretty thin up here. And we are coming back toward the base now. We're at 980 kilometers and it's getting lower. So we're slowly working our way back. Just continuing this hard uh, pull. Watching the heading come around. It's at about 3.30. And notice I'm still climbing a little bit. Velocity's still coming down. We're at 2,900 meters a second, 43 kilometers in altitude. I still want my uh, heading to come around. I need to, my heading to come all the way around to uh, 270. 
at least. And that'll be basically a straight shot back to the base. And as long as we can hold on to as much of this velocity as possible, it won't take all that long to get back over there. Heading's coming around about 310, so we're uh, northeast at this point. And we still want to still want to come around to the, or west rather. And we still want to come around to where we're at least straight west. And I'm just gonna roll out to the right a little bit. Again, I don't want to lose any more velocity than I have to since we're this far out. Because the more velocity you bleed off at this point, the longer it's going to take to get over there. We're at 41 kilometers in altitude. That's still quite good. We've got plenty of height, so we're not, uh, we don't have a lot of atmospheric drag up here at this altitude. We're 815 kilometers out from the base. Two thousand four hundred meters a second in velocity. And we're almost coming straight west now, so we'll be closing the distance to the base as quickly as possible by heading in a straight line toward it. And you can see here, since we have uh, Cape Canaveral targeted in Map MFD, you can see this indicator here. That's actually what we want to aim for. That's going to be our bearing. And that just means that that's, that's a straight line to where we're going. And the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So we want to head in a straight line toward the base. I'd like to roll a little bit to the right to bring that vertical speed up, but I want to continue this uh, roll until I'm heading in a straight line toward the base. So we're still coming around. Our bearing is now 247. And we're slowly catching up to the bearing. And once we get on target, what we'll do is we'll just level out the vessel, and we can actually even get away with a little bit of time warp at that point. But we're only 600 kilometers out. You can now see on map MFD we're starting to appear there on the far right. And we're almost at our bearing. So let's go ahead and start slowly rolling out so we don't lose any more vertical, so we don't lose any more altitude. A little too soon. A little more pressure on the back stick there. And there we have it, uh, not quite, a little bit more. <laughs> and we'll go a little bit past it and roll out. Okay, there we go, that's gonna be good enough. I'll just keep in a little bit of left bank. Now what I'm going to do is just add in some uh, down elevator or rather up elevator that'll keep me from descending into the atmosphere too quickly. We're at 520 kilometers out from the base and we're at 1,800 meters a second so we've still got plenty of velocity to get over there. And I'll pitch up just a little bit more because the up elevator isn't quite enough to keep me from descending. And a little bit more left bank just to make sure that I get on track with the bearing. When we get inside of 100 kilometers, we'll start, uh, we'll, we'll have a good indicator of getting lined up with the runway. And we're probably going to shoot for runway 15. Okay, we're passing the bearing a little bit, so we need to roll back this way. Okay, I'm going to be a little dangerous here just for the sake of time on the video, and I'm going to time warp forward carefully. Just one press of T. 
just to close down some of that distance for 300 kilometers 200 kilometers and then go back to real time we're about 140 kilometers out so let's kind of start assessing our situation here we got 1400 meters a second so we've got the velocity that we need to get over to the base but let's press F8 so that we can kind of see outside a little bit better and let me close this MFD don't really think we need that anymore and we know that the runway alignment at Cape Canaveral is uh, it's it's 15 it's 150 degrees so that means we, we, we need to be basically over here and we're gonna land this way there's the vehicle assembly building so I'm gonna kinda start rolling this way And this you kind of this takes a lot of experience and it helps a lot if you fly around KSC for a while to get a feel for where things are at because um, you may be looking at this and thinking how in the world can you possibly know where the runway is at and the runway is right here so I'm going to kind of turn this way a little bit to get out in front of it and we're still quite fast we're at over a thousand meters a second so. Uh, I actually need to bleed off some velocity at this point. I'm going to zero out my trim. And I'm going to continue heading north a little bit. And I will bring back up map MFD just so I can keep a, an eye on my distance from, uh, from the runway or from the base. I want to get out in front of the base a little bit more. So I'm now traveling away from it. We've still got plenty of velocity, so I'm going to go out until I'm about uh, maybe 60 kilometers from the base, and then I'll turn around and come back, and that will give me enough, uh, that should hopefully give me enough separation that I can get lined up with the runway and everything. Might even go out to 70 or 80 kilometers, but I'm just trying to get in front of the runway toward the north. And there's different, uh, there's another MFD you can use, uh, let me go down to... 0 0.1 for a moment uh, there's a HSI and what we have to do here is press control I and then bring up the spaceport we want Cape Canaveral and we're gonna put in we want to put in the uh, frequency of uh, runway 15 which is 134.20 and the way we do that is by bringing up ComNav similar to what we did for getting onto the ISS and we're just going to go with uh, cop number one and it's going to be 13420 that's what we need so we can close that out now on this side we've already got it selected so that's fine so I'm going to go ahead and bring back up uh, bring up surface now because I don't need the map and I'll press T to go back to 10 uh, real, real time and then when we get close enough to the runway that uh, HSI will come online and we're going to go for again runway 15 so we're going to set our course for 15 150 okay there we are and let me check my distance from the base with a map and lefty real quick uh, I'm farther out than I want to be so I need to quickly turn and we're going to head back in. Going to do about a 180 degree turn here. And try not to lose too much altitude in the process because we are getting we are getting rather low at this point. We're so we're getting a lot of atmospheric drag. So as I'm banking, I'm also pitching up to keep the velocity vector from falling too far down. And watch that out, watch that uh, you know our our velocity is just really trailing off at this point. I needed to, I should have turned around sooner might actually be a problem getting back to the base <laughs> again runway heading is 150 degrees so when we get around 
somewhere around 130, 140, where we should start seeing the uh, buildings and everything come into view. And there is over on the far left. Okay, I can see it coming into view now. Yeah, I didn't turn around soon enough. I'm not going to make it over there. That sucks. So I'm going to come up a little bit shy. Because I can, my velocity is already down to 350, and I've still got too far to go. My velocity vector is basically sitting on the runway, and that's going to be... I just don't think I can go that far. Check map MFD, see how far out I am. 88 kilometers, no, it's too far out. Okay, well, I will glide as far as I can, and then they'll have to call the ambulances to pick us up out of the swamp. But this is the general idea of deorbiting and landing and it takes a lot of tries to get it right as you can tell I've been flying orbiter for over three years now just over three years and I didn't get it right using the generic MFDs now you, what you can't do unfortunately you can't just pull back and uh, you know coast over there you know actually I can make it now that I think about it I'm so used to I always do dead stick landings I haven't I haven't done a powered landing and I can't tell you how long uh, but I do I just noticed I've got plenty of fuel so there's no need to completely spoil this flight um, when I get to the point where I can't get any far can't go any farther I will just use a little bit of main engine to push me the rest of the way that's just something again I haven't done in forever because when you're you know deorbiting and landing it's it's all about the dead stick landings That's how the space shuttle does it, and that's just the most realistic way to do it. But when you're new, when you're an absolute beginner like me, if you have to use a little bit of fuel to save your mission, go ahead and do it. And then each time that you do deorbit and land, you'll find that you're just a little bit better than you were the last time. And we're now 63 kilometers out. And again, if you're wondering how I know where I'm going, it's basically purely through experience. I know, I know the coast of Florida here so well at this point just from flying an orbiter that I know what I'm looking at even though these lines aren't really detailed I can tell that this little box right here that's the vehicle assembly building there's a runway here and then I know just through experience that the uh, the longer runway the 1533 is right here and that just is something that you will pick up on after you do a lot of flights you just get these mental pictures of what things should look like when you get close uh, when I was brand new to Orbiter and I was coming in for landings, I had no clue how to land because I couldn't see anything. I'm like, where is the you know dang runway? I can't see it. But after just lots of flights, you just memorize what you know all the shapes. Even even if you can't see these trace lines that are just barely visible, you can still see the shape of the coast here, and I know that this is the right shape. You know, I may actually have enough altitude to, to glide all the way over to the runway after all. I didn't think I was going to, but it looks like I very well may. Bonus. And now the, the runway lights are just barely coming into view. And what I'm referring to, if I don't know how well it shows up in the playback, but here and here I can see some runway lights. And we're not, at this point, we're not flying toward the bearing, which would put us, you know, basically over here, because we need to be in front of the runway. And I can even actually lower my velocity vector a little bit. So yeah, I've got, I really think I've got enough uh, altitude to uh, save this flight without having to turn on the engines. That makes me happy. I do not like having to, I, I feel like if I have to use power, I, I, I failed. And now the uh, navigation's coming online. You can see over there. It's, it's the left one is the main one that we're paying attention to. The right one doesn't really matter, the, although they're both the same. 
but what I'm what I can see here is that I'm obviously too far to the right and I need to go farther you know farther to the east now we're coming down through the cloud layer a little bit so things will be a little more clear again here's this runway over there's that runway I don't really use that HSI very much I pretty much do all my landings purely visually and it's a little harder to do landings in the Delta glider than the standard uh, in, in the standard Delta glider than it is the XR2 because the XR2 is much more uh, it glides a lot better but as we get closer to the runway what you'll see in, in that left MFD over there is you'll see that line start to come in toward the center and we need it to be perfectly centered if we're going to be centered on the runway but it, you need to know you can't just watch that um, because we're kind of moving too fast if we were flying a Cessna or something we could just watch that but since we're coming in at you know almost the speed of sound we got to we kind of have to know what we're doing so notice I'm already banking into the right even though that even though that HSI hasn't changed but I just know that if I don't I'm gonna be too far to the west of the runway or the east of the runway yep I've definitely got enough velocity and altitude that's pretty cool so now I'm just rot uh, banking a bit here you know getting plan planning ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and throw out the air brake slow myself down a little bit and if you look at the MFD you'll notice that lines kinda starting to get centered up and we are getting pretty close to center put down the landing gear bring the air brake back in 500 gear down 400 and almost centered up 300 200 and now we begin flaring out 100 50 40 30 20 and we're floating a little bit we should have left the air brake out a little bit longer 10 and touch down here in a second and there we have it and lock up the brake so that we can slow down and wait for wheel stop and there we have wheel stop okay now I realize that this video for the absolute beginner probably wasn't extraordinarily helpful because this is just something that you have to do yourself and you have to do it a bunch of times before you'll be any good at it whereas going to the ISS and doing the align plane and things like that that's a lot easier to explain in a video and then you can you can watch it and you can learn a lot from it with deorbit and landing it's it's a lot harder to to just to just make a video to say this is what you have to do um, all I can do is provide an example and that's really all this video is it's not a tutorial it's not it really is not even that good of a guide it's just simply an example that shows you the basic idea of what you can do and you watch this video and watch I've got a ton of other videos that I've done landings and as you watch all those different examples you can start piecing things together yourself but at the end of the day deorbit and landing is all about personal experience you just have to do it you just have to put in the time and do it um, I will come back and address this topic again and hopefully have a better uh, a better time targeting Cape Canaveral and not overshoot it by quite so much thousand kilometers that wasn't very good but um, at the very least I think that watching the examples you know helps because when I was brand new I'll give you an ex uh, a scenario when I was brand new to orbiter I remember when I tried to land I was doing my deorbit burn a thousand kilometers before getting to the base I thought that would be fine and I couldn't understand why I was coming down through the atmosphere and I had no control I was at you know 6,000 meters a second and I'm like why can't I control this thing I mean it's pretty ridiculous if you think about it I mean obviously you can't have atmospheric control when you're going that fast you don't really get any control over the vessel until you're down to about a thousand meters a second in velocity you just have very minimal steering uh, when you're coming down through the atmosphere so I, I can't really you know say much more about it um, just have to do it uh, but if you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you've got questions, 
leave me your questions. I try to answer each and every post that people put on my YouTube channel. If you thought this particular absolute beginner guide was terrible and you think I should delete it, let me know and I'll, I'll take that into consideration. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.